Ladies and cool hat wearers, Andy here, author of the Best Indie Guide on the internet and inventor of Porsche, the car manufacturing company. This is the Killer and Loser show. Let's fucking go. I'm joined by this woman here. Hi. She was hiding behind me the entire time in my Porsche hat. Stop saying Porsche. <laughs> Porsche. And we, ladies and gentlemen, are going to talk about this little thing. So this is a beautiful book that I wrote. It's not actually a hard copy book. It's available as an ebook and a <clears throat> video course, how to have threesomes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about some threesome stuff. We'll answer a couple of questions, have a bit of fun with that. But if you do want to know how to have threesomes, I did a video course and a book. Um, go to my website, killyourinaloser.com, search for the threesome guide. So you've had a threesome before. Mm -hmm. I have had I've a had at before. least one threesome. <clears throat> and I thought we'd have a bit of fun just shooting the shit. Yeah. Talking about why threesomes are cool. Why you're a cool person if you have a threesome. Why if you haven't had one, you can't, you literally cannot be legally declared a cool person until you've had one. And we'll kind of go through that. So with that, start. Let's I don't think I have a lot to say on that topic. <laughs> what is your, so I got a bunch of questions here. What is your favorite part of a threesome? Why do you like having threesomes? And when we talk about threesomes, we mean with other girls. Mm -hmm. We're in a relationship where you and I see other girls together. Mm-hmm have sexual coital relationships with them. What's your favorite part of a threesome? I think my favorite part is when you are having sex with the other girl. And that does happen a little bit during a threesome, yeah. A little bit. And we look at like each other and smile and sometimes our mouth, I love you. Part of that feels very intimate or sometimes it's less romantic and more sexual mm -hmm. and we kind of turn each other on. That's true. And yeah, I think that's that's probably the hottest part. My answer is way cooler. My answer is when you and the other girl kiss, it's hot as fuck. It's like porn. That's a much better answer than your little lovey-dovey answer of like, oh, I like the to feel... The bit that's intimate. I like to feel intimate with you. I'm like, I just like it to be hot as shit. No, but it is... Okay, being serious, like, for anyone listening who has a threesome or who wants to have a threesome especially if you do it in the context of like if you're already in a relationship or there's one girl you're seeing that you already kind of like and you two go and like meet another woman together it does feel like an oddly intimate experience like i think a lot of people look at threesomes and think it's just like a purely sexual thing mm. whereas you know at the start a lot of our threesomes were purely sexual sure but i think we focus a lot on the um like in the actual threesome itself and and this you know just drop my mouse this uh, guide that I have, the how to have a threesome um, guide, I talk a fair bit in there about how to make it a sort of, not so much intimate, but like a fun experience for everyone, rather than just like, oh, this is a sexual fantasy to tick off. And obviously it is mm. a sexual fantasy, but like we do talk quite a bit about like how to make sure they both enjoy it, how to make it more of like a, you know what I'm trying to say, like a deeper experience rather than just like get your dick wet with two pussies. Yeah, because I think if you do just view it as, like like you said, something to tick off, like purely a sexual experience, I think that's probably when it could be a less fulfilling time. It's like, oh, that was kind of just sex. If you're not, sure. if you're not actually trying to do it, because I can see it being the sort of thing where when you're doing it and you're so focused on the fact that you've just got to get it done, it almost doesn't become enjoyable because you're not focusing on the sex you're not focusing on enjoying it or what would actually feel good it's just like i've got to do this thing because in theory it'd be cool if i did this thing yeah i think that happens with a lot of um <clears throat> sex and dating goals is like especially we as men can get so focused on like just getting the next notch so to speak like oh let me sleep with another woman i want to sleep with this many women or even something like losing your virginity a lot of guys will just focus on oh i just got to get my dick wet. got to finally lose my virginity and one thing I say to all my coaching clients, and I'll say to all of you, is I say, you know, focus on actually having fun while you're doing it. Remember, the point of this wasn't just to, like, tick a threesome off or something. It's to slow down, um, be a little grateful for the fact that you're doing something cool, that, like, yes, if you are about to have your threesome or, you know, you find yourself in the middle of a threesome, be grateful for the experience. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to be nice to these women. I'm going to be really grateful to them. Like, actually enjoy the thing that's happening. And mm -hmm. this applies to, like, every goal, obviously. People get so focused on the end goal hmm. that they forget to actually enjoy it's all about the journey and not the destination and there's truth in that like yeah or i mean like i guess the act of having a threesome it is the destination but you've got to actually enjoy it once you get there for sure yeah 
What is uh, the most surprising? What was the most surprising thing about having threesomes for you? About having a threesome. I don't like recycling my answers, but I think <laughs> when it started becoming intimate, that was a surprise. Because when, for a bit of context, when we first started dating, it was casual. So when we would see girls together, it was purely sexual. Mm-hmm. And I think at the start, there also was bits of insecurity as to like where I stood and how you felt sure. about me and all that sort of stuff. And so the focus was on like was on the situation being sexual mm-hmm. because that's how we were connecting. But I think as things developed and we came closer and we were actually like in a more established relationship, mm-hmm. I was incredibly surprised at like how connected I felt with you when we're actually seeing another girl in the middle of sex with another girl mm-hmm. and how that actually brought us closer. Yeah, and we could have a whole big conversation about like jealousy and insecurity and all that sort of stuff, which was something that you and I worked through together. Obviously, I wasn't the jealous one because like you're, you know, you had some jealousy or you felt a lot of jealousy at the start of like, how do I deal with the fact that like, and let's be clear, like you wanted to have threesomes, but like, Mm. How do I deal with the fact that my boyfriend or the per- you, we weren't boyfriend girlfriend at the time, but like someone that I like or someone that I'm attracted to or someone that I care about is currently with someone else while at the same time as me? Basically, it was like unexplored territory that we both had to figure out. Like, how does this feel? Are you comfortable with this? Mm. Like, and, and and I make this very clear to everybody. Like, if one of your pa- if your partner isn't comfortable with something, obviously don't make them do it. But like, it was something we both wanted to do. Mm-hmm. It was just like, how do I deal with these feelings that come up? Because jealousy, I think this is another thing. Like, jealousy has this bad label where people say, like, oh, I'm never allowed to feel jealous in a relationship, or you know, especially an open one. They say like, there should never be any jealousy, and I'm supposed to just be okay with everything. That's like, yeah, because you've agreed it's going to be open. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like you talk about that stuff. You talk through it. You go like, are you cool with this? Like, how does it feel? Like, you know, and it's like when you have that, when you do talk about that stuff, you can then kind of figure out solutions to the problems. And mm. I've said this so many times. Every every problem has a solution, and so when the other person says or when your woman says oh like I just felt a little bit jealous or you know sometimes I just worry that like maybe you're more attracted to her than me like that was an insecurity that came up with you quite a bit Mm -hmm. you can sort of go like all right well how do we fix this problem all right like if you're worried that if you're starting to feel like maybe you're not that special why don't I spend a bit of extra time with you or if you're starting to feel like what if this other girl is prettier than me we can have a whole conversation about how it's not about her being pretty or not pretty it's about you like, it's not a competition. It's not like, oh, is she prettier than me? It's like, are you pretty? Are you not happy in your own attractiveness? Let's work on that. Let's improve that. Let's make you feel good about that. So it definitely helped us be a lot more open and, and communicative. For sure. Yeah. But I think it also, it was a very good testament. It was is because it was one of the first things that we ever, was basically the first challenge that we worked through. Yeah, because it came up incredibly early on. We're talking like a couple of months in. Yeah, so it was still pretty casual at that point in time. It wasn't like boyfriend, girlfriend. But we did have to basically, it was a real test of me and some of my philosophies where I say like every problem has a solution. It was definitely a test of that. Yeah. It was like, are there solutions to these problems? Because I know early on you were concerned or you felt like, I don't know if this can be fixed. When I say fixed, I mean like the jealousy. You're like, I don't, will there ever be a day that I don't feel jealous and insecure? And I'm not worried about like, am I pretty enough or is she prettier than me? Mm you weren't sure if there was ever going to be a day when you were like happy in yourself basically and yeah. i was like 100 percent convinced i was like look you you know fine maybe one day you decide like i don't want to do this that that's fine that's a different conversation but if you do want to do this mm. this is like fixable your insecurity is fixable cost like it's just called self-esteem it's called stoicism it's called liking yourself it's it's all of that kind of stuff and i was 100 percent convinced that every problem has a solution and it was just yeah. a good test of that or a good opportunity to prove that. Sure. <laughs> good contribution, sure. You look like you were really thinking then. You're like, sure. I guess I there's a lot to talk about there, though, and I'm not sure if good. like that um, derails where this was going. But it's like, I guess it, in the early days, 
I because it, it took a good couple of years for me to not be so on edge about seeing girls like because mm. I we, we we discussed it a few times but like sometimes when we would see a new girl together there was that I think tension for both of us mm-hmm. as to how it would feel if insecurity was would come up if I was going to f- like feel a bit closed off mm. or mm-hmm. like disconnect a little bit um and I guess, yeah, the question, like you said, like, obviously every problem has a solution. Mm. But I guess my concern at the time was that the solution was going to be, I can't do this. Which for, yeah. which for some people, I guess, it, like, it will be. Like, and I yeah. even said to you at the time, if you ultimately decide you don't want to be in a relationship, like, not good, but, like, good that you had that realisation. We'll go separate ways. Like, you know, I obviously love you. I hope the best for you. Yeah, we had those conversations. Yeah. But ultimately, yes, like, mm. having seen, like sorted that out it's I would say like brought us profoundly closer and has taught yeah, us sure. a hell of a lot yeah for sure and this is like a massive derailing of course like if we're just talking about a casual <laughs> sexual relationship yeah. you probably but you know as I put in the the guide again just go to my website search for how to have a threesome guide as I put in the the guide jealousy does often come up in a threesome even if you're both just like ultra casual and it's not jealousy jealousy as a concept doesn't exist there is no such thing as jealousy as i said in the guide um it's insecurity Mm -hmm. so if you're jealous of someone else you're actually insecure about yourself a flip side of that is if you're really happy with yourself or you really are you know content or on a path of contentment you don't really get jealous of other people no you're more like happy for them you're like i'm glad Yeah, you're really happy for them doing good like at this point in time i haven't been jealous like i might get jealous here and there sure fine like every now and then i might be but like it's re- it's so fucking ridiculously rare that it goes like years without like before and i i can't even think of the last time i was jealous of someone because it's just like my life isn't perfect but my life is like more than amazing enough and I'm, i have so much to be grateful for and i've achieved so much that it's like if someone is miles ahead of me and believe me there are people that are miles of course there's people that have there had you know, that have a million dollars a month of earnings and all that sort of stuff. But I look at that and I'm like, that's inspiring. That's awesome. I want that person to be happy. So when you're pretty happy with your own life, it's hard to be jealous of someone else. Mm. And so, yeah, all of this is a roundabout way of saying if a if someone is jealous or they're insecure, that means there's work to be done on themselves, like mental work, physical work, like whatever it is. And so insecurity may come up in a threesome, even if it's just a casual relationship. Um, and I talk about how to deal with that in the guide. Again, go to my website, um, search for the guide. I talk about specifically how to handle it, but the biggest point is like basically empathizing with the the girl or the person and just saying, hey, look, let's work on you or, or let's make it all about you. Let's inquire into you. Like, why, why do you feel jealous of this other person or feel insecure about this other girl? What is that saying about you? How do we get you to a point where you don't feel insecure about other people? Yeah, well, that was my most surprising answer. <laughs> That was a long answer to that question. Again, the question was, what is the most surprising thing about threesomes? Um, my answer is a little more um, tangible, like, pra- like physical, I guess you could say. The most surprising thing about threesomes to me and something that I'd never thought about until I'd had a few, and at this point we've had like a, a shitload of threesomes, doing it for like four years, four and a half years at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it was the way that girls, how they treat each other differently to men um how they're much more gentle and sweet um really slow and you know you you do it as well so do the other girls you're both like just really like um i don't think loving is the quiet word it's like like affectionate or sweet sweet yeah and women are like you know guys listening part of the reason why we like women so much is because they're so affectionate and sweet when you see two women together no it's like on a whole different (laughs) level it's insane and it's like I one of the things I like to do the most is just let the other two girls like let you and and the other girl do whatever you want to do and women will just sit there and like make out with each other for like half an hour like which is something that we don't really ever do like like we as men with you know making out with a woman or something you don't tend to just make out with her and nothing else for like half an hour because you get horny and then like end up fucking yeah (laughs) and it's usually our fault exactly right it's usually not fault but it's usually the man's like impetus to like he'll start getting horny and and testosterone kicks in horniness like oh i gotta fuck you now women don't have that like oh i'm horny i gotta fuck now 
And so it's like, imagine if you just didn't have, it's going to be so hard for guys to understand. Imagine if you just didn't have testosterone or that like sex drive. So stuff still felt good, but there's no like, oh, I want to fuck now. Like, oh, I want to fuck her. She's turning me on. Imagine if there just wasn't that. It's hard to really understand that because our, our sex drive is so aggressive is not the right word, but like maybe aggressive is the right word. Dominant, like active, active. I think active is the right mm. word. Mm -hmm. And because our sex drive is so active, it can be hard to sort of picture what I'm thinking, what I'm talking about. But yeah, women are just very like, I don't want to say passive because you still do stuff with each other. Mm but it's much more like slower, it's less aggressive, it's less assertive, it's much more gentle. They would just sit there and cuddle and like giggle. When I, every time I leave um, to go to the toilet, like if I leave, you guys, I can just hear you giggling. Like, well, you hear giggling. Women giggle. Oh, so you're sitting really far back, I realized. Am I? Yeah, okay. you gotta I sit closer, lady. Shuffle we forward. Go. Um, well, I guess not to prove your point, but yesterday we saw a new girl for the first time and she hadn't had any experience with women before, mm -hmm. like at all. I don't think she'd even kissed another girl before. And it was while you were in the bathroom, actually, and I was talking to her very briefly about that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also the physicality that, obviously it's not surprising, but like I think... S not supports, but goes well with that, like that softness and that sweetness and not being so aggressive is that women do like physically feel very different. There's yeah. like a softness and a gentleness. And I, I've said this like multiple times before, and I say this to most girls who haven't um, been with another girl before, but it is like, it, there's a very stark difference with how soft a girl is compared to a man. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, obviously that's the case, but when you feel it, it feels so different. Like when you lie, <laughs> when you lie on top of another girl, and it's just like soft skin on more soft skin. It's, <laughs> it's very soft, and I think that goes <laughs> hand in hand with like the the softness and the sweetness. And sure. yeah, it is it is very gentle and. Yeah, men are a lot more masculine. Obviously, that's mm. that's part of the the genders. Um, yeah, so that was always as as that was the surprising thing, and I'm, I'm still every now and then like I, I'm not surprised by it anymore, but it's always nice. It is a nice, it's a nice balance because it's for most of you guys, it's it's not something you've ever seen before. If you watch a lot of lesbian porn, fine, you see it. Um, it's different in person though; it's way different in person. Um, porn is like nothing compared to like watching two women together or, or having a threesome in real life. It's not even remotely the same because in porn there's still an agenda. Like the two girls in porn aren't going to sit there and giggle for like half an hour and just caress each other's bodies sure. and, and touch each other's faces and play with each other's hair, like in porn. Cause it's like, you wouldn't watch that. Yeah. Um, maybe an exception to that is if any of you have ever watched, um, there's a couple of porn studios that do it. Abby Winters is one of them. Um, another one called like Ersties, E-R-S-T-I-E-S. Um, there's another one called Girls Out West. Just a few of these like very amateur kind of um, porn studios. Like they're actual porn studios, but they just get complete amateur women um, to participate. And they do do stuff like the two girls will just literally lay there cuddling for like 20 minutes, playing with each other, talking, um, hmm. like, and then they'll have sex. And it, it's that's a little closer to what it's like in real life. But in other normal, or probably all the porn that most of you have seen, it's just like, there's an agenda. There's a script. Yeah, I yeah, think it's not real. Ultimately, lesbian porn's mostly created for men. So, like, sure. there is that sense of like something needs to be like happening. happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which you'll find is not when you have a threesome. Which um, what you'll find is that the girls are usually waiting for you, the man, to tell them what to do next. Um, again, read my you know grab grab this sexy guide. Um, because I talk about exactly what to do in that. But one of the points I make is like, you're taking the lead. Like they're going to be looking to you, for you for, they're going to be looking to you for cues. Mm -hmm. It's a hard sentence. Very. Terrible sentence. I'm very tired, guys. I just <laughs> recorded a podcast with a, a guy that'll be up in the, probably up by the time you guys see this. Um, guy called Cal or Caleb. And we talked for four hours. 
That's very, I don't know. The podcast is on four hours because, like, we finished it and then he and I just chatted for, like, another two hours and I, another hour or so. The podcast is about two and a half hours, maybe three hours. Mm. Fuck, man, that was an intense podcast. It was amazing, but, like, yeah, so I'm a little, I'm a little brain dead right now. I've, I've literally just been sitting here in front of the microphone for, like, four hours or so without really a break. All right. Uh, your favorite way to initiate a threesome. I know your favorite way to initiate a threesome. Well, I think I know. I like all the ways. You'll get... No, I know what you're going to... You just... Come on. Hey, you say your way and then... <laughs> my my favorite way is any way that you initiate because it means that I don't have to initiate. Classic woman. <laughs> gentlemen. Gentlemen. It's what all women want is for them to do nothing. Yep. And their favorite way of initiating is when they don't initiate. I like it when it just happens and when it just happens... Gentlemen. In, <laughs> we're not doing anything. <laughs> and uh, so I really appreciate that you you initiate basically most of the time yeah I do most of the time um, except when you occasionally ask me to yeah so that's one fun thing so again in the book or in the guide I list out a bunch of different ways I actually wrote quite a few ways in the guide of like how to initiate a threesome um, again the guide go read the guide if you want to have a threesome just go read the guide I really do like hold your goddamn hand but one of the things I wrote in there is like how to actually initiate a threesome. And I wrote down like maybe 15 different ways that I like to do it, maybe 20 different ways. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't massively matter how you initiate it. Like it's not gonna be smooth. It doesn't have to be, it can be awkward, that's fine. All three of you are probably a little nervous if the girls haven't done anything like this before. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be smooth. But one of my favorite ways is that you can just tell one of the other girls to do it. Um, that's actually a really fun way of initiating. If you say, like, if you are with the two girls on the couch, maybe you've had some wine or, you know, maybe not, whatever, um, you can literally just say to them, you two should kiss. And, like, because you've directly told them to do that, pretty much every girl will do it. They're like, oh, okay, like, they're going to follow your order, if you know what I mean, like, mm. because most women are submissive and like guys to sort of take the lead. So they'll do it. But in your mind, you're like, sweet, I didn't have to do anything. I just told them to do it. And in their mind, they're like, sweet, we didn't have to do anything. We just have to follow orders. So it's like, that's probably the easiest way to initiate a threesome if everyone's nervous. Um, but then on top of that, there's like a million different ways. Probably my favorite. If, if the question is, what is my favorite way to initiate? Um, maybe what I did yesterday and what I've done the last couple of days, actually, where like we come in... You know, so we've already been out on a date. We know each other, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, you two are sitting on the couch. And then I just walk over to the girl, put my hand out. And she'll obviously give me her hand. And then I just lead her to the bedroom and you come. Yep. That's like probably, that's an easy way. You don't have to do anything. They usually, mm. most of the time, the girls that we s see haven't had a threesome before. Or they mm. haven't had um, experience with women. So they're really nervous. And I feel like that's just a really nice, like easy and almost like sweet way to initiate it. it's like hey just give me a hand come on i'll take you and then we'll have sex like, yeah i think it cuts through like any awkward like sitting on the couch chatting tension just like waiting for the thing to happen yeah for sure. because usually again for more context we context we will go to a cafe first we'll go over for a drink get to know them first and then invite them back so it's not as if we haven't already taken the time yeah and most a of the bit. time or at least half of the most of the time um we've already been on a date beforehand anyway yeah, so there's no real need to sit As around. As in being on a date on a separate day, like yes. a first date separately. Yeah, and so delaying it by kind of sitting around doesn't really achieve anything, so... Yeah, it's yeah like it is home, nice. Grab her by the hand, hey, come on, let's do this thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also like when I tell you to just kiss the girl, when I give you a preemptive... When I tell you, like, hey, as soon as we get in, you got to grab her and kiss her. Because I find that personally very sexy, hmm. like watching one woman grab the other. So, you, guys, you can do that if you want to. Tips for a first time threesome, especially if the guy is nervous. So just give maybe one or two tips. If poor little gentleman's having his first threesome, he's a little bit nervous. Is, I guess, reminding yourself that the girls are nervous too. Like yep. everyone's nervous. It's not just you. You're not mm -hmm. the only one that's a little bit worried and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in the same boat because mm -hmm. it's probably pretty unlikely that the girls that you're sleeping with are yeah threesome aficionados most people haven't had a threesome so yeah yeah you're probably not going to find two girls that have both had a threesome and they're like you know you're the nervous inexperienced guy and we know what we're doing even then they're going to be nervous like we've slept with quite a few women that have had threesomes and have mm. had plenty of sex and girl experience they're still nervous mm. 
most girls are nervous most of the time um and so if you are that's fine um going off that point i would also add in you're on the same team mm. um it can be very easy to have sort of a combative mindset with dating in general women do it just as much as men like both genders sort of see the other gender as like the other of like you know the thing to be conquered or even if you don't think in those terms i, I can't fuck this up because she'll think less of me like you're you're basically worried about what they might think or that you might make a fool of yourself or you might not be an alpha male or like you know any of that kind of stuff remember that you're on the same team with these people like these two women that you're seeing um that you're going to have your threesome with they both want to have a good time too they both want you to have a good time and so all three of you are in the same situation you're all back at your place you all know exactly what's going to go on like they're all there for a threesome again in my guide i talk about how to have threesomes in a very like honest way like you literally tell women like would you like to fool around with another girl and i like you so you're literally saying like we're going to have a threesome you all know why you're there you're all there for a threesome you all want the same fucking goal and so guys will often fall into this and this is a big reason why a lot of guys want a threesome but don't actually make it happen it's because they're terrified of doing a bad job hmm. they're like what if i can't please the two women oh my god there's two women now it's like extra it's like that's even harder i have to please two women now and what i always say is like you're on the same team as them it's all three of you wanting the same thing and coming together and so if you're nervous just tell them and they'll be like well i'm nervous too and then cool now we can all be sort of nervous together it's not this like you're trying to please two women and they're gonna you know score you on how alpha male chad you were and if you were a nervous wreck like not not good enough i'm not having another threesome yeah i guess that's another thing i can say is they will be a lot more forgiving or patient if it's not great the first time i wouldn't even be trying to have a great first threesome and that's what i say in the guide i say like don't worry about having a first like a great first time think of it more like it's a chance for the two girls to explore together and you can get in there and explore a bit as well it's like the three of you just exploring and then the second third and fourth threesomes will be a lot better yeah. not that the first one will be bad it no, won't be fucking all. life-changing and amazing but like yeah it's like don't expect that it will be some like perfect porn scenario because it's not no there's a lot of figuring out to do for positions and where things go because yeah. you're adding a third body in there yeah it's something that most people haven't done before they're like what are the logistics of having a threesome in your mind you know roughly how a threesome would go but if i say to you all right like explain it to me how it's gonna go you go oh shit uh fuck like how how would i actually shit um maybe i lie down on my back and one sits on top of my dick and one sits on my face like you have to actually think about how you would do it it's not like normal sex mm. so not that it's complicated and no. again in the guide i explain exactly what to do so grab that guide but yeah, on top of that, any other tips? Um, this isn't necessarily a tip, but I would say that ultimately girls are really nice. Yeah, girls are super fucking nice. And they're more, um, again, to, to reiterate the previous point, in a threesome, and just in general, but in a threesome, the girls will be so fucking focused. You think that they're focused on, like, your performance? <laughs> we all do this guys tend to like we all tend to be very self-critical and self-focused but guys will be obsessed about like what if she's worried that i don't do a good job or what if this it's like if you even just could be in her head for half a second and by the way just ask her ask her what she's thinking and every single one of them will tell you like oh i'm i'm really nervous that i won't do a good job i the woman won't mm. do a good job i'm worried that you'll think i'm not pretty i'm worried that the other girl will be prettier than me i'm worried that you'll like the other girl more than me i'm worried she'll do a better job than me i'm worried i won't know how to please her I'm worried like I don't know how to make another woman feel good. I'm worried that she'll say I did a bad job. I'm worried that she'll say I'm a bad kisser. I'm worried that her boobs are better than mine. It's like they're both so in their own head because if you think about it, you as the man, your insecurity is I hope I can please both women, which is not even what you need to worry about. But I get that that's the, the, the default insecurity. Mm -hmm. For women, it's oh my fucking God, there's competition right next to me. Yeah, and that's... Like, that's almost always going to be what the other girl is concerned about. Because yep. it's not... They're both thinking that. <laughs> I Fuck, think... I, this other girl's competing with me directly, even though it's not a competition. That's what they'll be worried about. Yeah, and that's not... I think a lot of women carry that around, not just, like, sexually, just, but, like, day-to-day. -day. Like, if you're in For a sure. room with other women. So, like, even more so than when you're naked, having yeah, sex with another woman be. next to yeah. you. Yeah. And you have to share... Not that it's really like this, but there is only one dick there. 
So you do have to kind of share. Now, it's not really like two women competing for the one dick. It's more like all three people coming together and having a great time, regardless of gender. Hey, I, look at me. I turned out to be a fucking <laughs> liberal, didn't I? But yeah, it's it's all three people coming together, having a good time. It's not really a competition, but mm. both of them will probably be worried and insecure about that. In the same way you might be insecure about not doing a good job as the man. Hmm. So different dynamics. Um, it sort of depends on the girls that you get with. Sometimes you'll get with two submissive girls. And so, hmm. you know, and I talk about this in the guide, um, you will take more of the lead. Sometimes they will both be more confident. Maybe they're more sexually experienced or they're just a little older or they're just more comfortable in themselves. And so the threesome is a little... Like, you're still taking the lead a little bit, but it's more like it just kind of floats. Um, sometimes one of them will be super confident. Like, with mm. you, you and I, when we have sex with a girl, we're both ultra confident. Yeah. And sometimes they are, but most of the time they're not. Yeah, and I think because we come, like, you and I come from the dynamic of being a couple, yep. it's definitely more the sense of, like, it's us and we're showing this other girl a good time. Yep. Yep. Whereas at the start, it definitely wasn't like that at all. Quite often, it was just, like, another girl and I were both submissive and you would take yes. the lead and direct things a little bit more. Yep. I think even more so when it's not traditionally submissive, but there's just two inexperienced girls. It's very yep. much the same. Like the guy takes the lead or yep. even if the guy isn't that dominant, everyone's kind of just like fooling around and exploring mm -hmm. and it's less, it has less direction, I guess. And it is a lot more explorative. And so I think on that note, what I'd say is or the reason we're bringing this up is to kind of just let it go with the flow. You know what I mean? Like, what am I trying to say? Like adapt to the, adapt, like let, 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 you'll see what I mean. When you start the actual threesome, you get a feel for what each girl is. Like maybe if they're both inexperienced, you go like, oh, okay, they're both nervous. Like, you know, we'll just be three nervous people exploring together. Or if they're both super confident, you'd be like, cool, this is like, I don't have to like encourage them as much or I don't have to look after them as much. Like we can all just kind of have fun together. So the point that I'm making is let it like be adaptive, I guess what I'm saying. Let it just go with the flow like let go and just see what happens and yeah you'll see different types of girls and different dynamics you have you end up having a different type of threesome almost and it's fun like it's fun to just explore yeah i think that's one of the most enjoyable things it's not the same thing every time going mm. through the same positions where you do the exact same things i think because there's so many more variables when mm -hmm. you have an extra person and then obviously everyone's like individual personalities come into it you, you are always trying something different and I guess getting to know someone new, but yeah, the situation, the, yeah, the dynamic changes every time. For sure. For sure. I think maybe we'll wrap up. It's been about half an hour. <laughs> we still have a bunch of questions, but maybe we'll answer them in a future video. So this one doesn't go on for super long. So I'll wrap up again. If you want to have a threesome, grab this. It's on my website, how to have a threesome. And it's like a video course and a book. Put a lot of time and effort into it. You wrote a huge chapter of it, actually. Yeah. You wrote a section um, for women specifically mm -hmm. who want to go and find other women to have sex with, you know, a guy they're seeing either casually or not. And so the whole point of this, guys, for you guys listening, is you give that book or that ebook to your woman. You literally just send her the PDF like it's a separate book. You send it to her and you say, hey, like, go find us some girls to sleep with together. So you basically get hands-free sex like it's something that you obviously do yep. you bring in women for us to sleep with and you wrote this guide so it's like it's very it's very much you can literally just hand it to the woman your woman and because it was written by you it's very like empathetic and it's very like you understand like women's concerns and what they might not be good at and how to teach them and shit so it's literally mm -hmm. like hands off just hand her the fucking book so yeah it's kind of a cheat code you thought you want to say on that no, no it's good if you want to have threesomes, this will cover everything. It's very comprehensive. It's long. We put in a, a good way. Effort, like, it, it will answer all the questions. Book. and Yeah. It's not massively long. The book is fucking long. The book is, like, 200 pages. Like, we put so much effort into the damn book. But there's also a video course that comes along with it. It's, mm. like, four hours. So you can easily just blast through that and go, like, all right, fine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, go to my website. How to have a threesome. It's a book. It's a video course. Highly recommended. Everyone who's got it so far has loved it. Um We've sold quite a few of them now. Yeah. Quite a bunch. So, yeah, that's there if you want that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, go out there and crush those... Goals. Goals. Goals, by the way, not girls. I wonder if anyone's ever misheard that and said crush those girls. That's fucked up. Don't crush girls, crush goals.